Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. From the break the blank page, what comes next? I hear you're going to see me finish those pages I started in that break the blank page video. I'll put a link in the I cards. So this one started off with me decoupaging down a napkin. Now the napkin I chose was one that I actually my friend was just using and I just asked if I could take it home and use it in my art. I love the colors, they spoke to me, and I knew I could put it down as a kind of an Insta background. But of course, we're going to add more to this. And first thing what we're going to do is we're going to apply color using the block and blend technique. And yes, that's one of the techniques that I broke some of the the blank pages. Now I'm picking, picking the colors from the colors that are in the napkin. That's directing those choices. So once the page is broken, it's guiding me to this. So what I'm doing, because this has been covered with gel medium, it's non-porous, it blends very easily, and I'm putting on turquoise paint and that yellow color as well. And I'm just going back and forth, applying it with a makeup sponge and just bringing out those colors, making them a little bit more vibrant. But it's not blocking the patterning that's there. There are some very fine patterns and those will also direct the choices moving forward. It's the feel that it gives you. It's the, the vibe, so to speak, that you get when you see certain colors and patterns that are going to direct where you take it. I don't really have a plan here. I'm simply, I want to bring out these colors. I'm loving how the yellow going over top of this is really making it pop. It's kind of giving it almost a neon look. Now this stencil is called Butterfly Collage and I love that it has several motifs in it and I just want to add a little bit more stenciling. That again was one of the ways we broke the blank page by stamping or stenciling. And here I'm adding more layers. And I'm picking stencils, a stencil that correlates with the motifs that were already in the napkin, if that makes sense. So I went on with the teal. Now I'm going to add some white to this just to bring out this at a little bit more. And it is overall, it's going to lighten my background. Remember when I broke the blank page, the goal there was to just get started. So you're not facing the blank page. I did not even complete backgrounds necessarily. Here, I'm still working on the background. So after adding that, I decided that I wanted to add this peacock doily stencil. And I chose this stencil because those colors just remind me of peacocks, which I love. And I'm just using part of the stencil and I just keep going because it's just making me happy to put all this marking down there. It's lightening the thing. And do you see where the block and blocking colors, you no longer see those straight edges, those raw edges, because you're adding layers on top. So now this background to me looks very much peacock. Like a flock of peacocks or a pile of peacock feathers.
and I do have some stencils that are peacock feathers and I thought oh I could be could put on that on top so I've got ideas coming through my head some that I will not use and some that I will so I'm going to edge this now with black I want to frame my page and often if I'm putting the black on at this stage it's because I don't know what the next step is or I haven't decided and sometimes when I do this it just gives me more time to think so I added that black and I liked that little addition of black so I grabbed my shelf liner and some black acrylic paint and I kind of got it splotchy there so quick with the baby wipe I wiped off some of this white paint hadn't hadn't been dry yet so it came off so I just reapplied the stencil no worries and I'm coming back and I'm just adding a little bit of black this is adding that all important contrast to the page And it's pushing back the stenciling I did with the Peacock Doily stencil. And just FYI, all the links to the stencils can be found below. So here's my background. And, and you know, it's, it's cloudy days here, so sometimes the pictures aren't very good. Now i am decided that I am going to use my white pearl modeling paste from the crafters workshop and this stencil that is called onion blossom i'm just masking off parts of it i'm going to have this cross this style now this white pearl modeling paste is absolutely to die for it's pearlized it's shimmery it just goes on like a dream and my preferred way is to use a key card especially when i'm doing a fairly large amount of stenciling and I'm just pushing it through I'm not really attempting to get it too straight or too level it just adds more texture and I pull it off now you need to wash your stencils right away when you've used any kind of modeling paste or gesso and what I'm doing here, instead of just washing this off, because there, I've got a little bit on the side there and there's some on the stencil, I'm grabbing a sheet of tissue paper and I'm going to pull all that excess in through the stencil and stencil it on that tissue paper. Then this will go into my stash and I can glue that down onto another page the tissue paper goes translucent and you'll have the white pearl modeling paste and that can just be a embellishment on another page. So because I did so much white stenciling, it was interfering with the focal image. So what I decided to do and what I'm doing here is I am doing a wash with the turquoise paint and then I am removing the paint off of the white pearl modeling paste. That it is, gives a little bit of a resist so it doesn't stick and you have some time to pull it off. So the white pearl modeling paste is staying white pearl and the background, the white that's in the background is getting pushed back. And this is allowing the focal image, the stenciling, to show through or to look like it's in front of everything else. So doing a wash is a good way of just pushing the background back. I'm just pulling the paint off of any of the white pearl modeling paste here. But as you can see, by doing that wash, I can still see all the stenciling, all the stamping that I did in the background. 
and the colors are still coming through. And because I'm using a baby wipe, I can pull back more or less as I see fit. In the yellow areas, I want that yellow to shine through, so I'm pulling, taking back more of the wash. So then I'm just giving this a quick dry. I decide that I want to add some splatters, and so I'm adding some splatters with the two main colors, the turquoise here, and then I'm going to splatter with the yellow, just to bring that to the forefront. As always, I use my fan brush to splatter with. I, I just have the most success, but you can use round brushes and tap it, two brushes together. There's lots of ways to splatter. Find one that works for you and make that work. So I love the yellow splatters. They It just really added a lot to that page. Giving that a dry. Now, I am using sentiments from my soon to be released sentiment pack time after time. And here I am just auditioning the various sentiments and I'm just holding it where I would be putting it and making a final decision about does it work? Which one looks better? I kind of like that one. It almost looks like it is another onion blossom. I think that's a dandelion on that with the white background. So I really like that one. So I'm putting that in the maybe pile. Some of them I like the quotes, but they don't fit the orientation of this. Some I like the font better. Some are some of the fonts are bolder. There we go. This one says. Exhale the back and forth. I like this one. It's a little bit bigger. Seems to fit the scale of the onion blossom. Inhale the future, exhale the past. That's the quote. And it almost, it does, you know, the size of it makes it look. So I'm going to glue that down with my TCW gel medium. And I put some underneath and then some on top. And my quotes are just printed out on uh, copy paper. My General's charcoal pencil. I'm just shading around. Remember, there's that, that little bit of black in the background, and I'm going to shade around the outside edges just to get that more smudged look. I like that smoky look. And you can, I'm just pointing out the difference between what I haven't done and what I've done. So we started out with napkins that we broke the blank page with a all over color napkin. We applied color using the block and blend technique. We did some stamping and stenciling with colors in black and white, and we put modeling paste through a stencil. Thank you so much for watching. Some close-ups are coming up. If you like this page or you're liking this series, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, go to Instagram and follow me on Instagram. Now go get creative.